something? Yeah, I do. Right. If you're ready to write. Sure. Well, I, uh, wait till I, can. I mean, we can talk about what it is. Okay. I can't remember what the cost of it is. Mm. Talk it up. Let's talk it up. Okay. Yeah. Let's come to order. Welcome to our work session. Any questions on the agenda? Consent agenda. Grant, you uh, see anything on there you want further information about? Well, we usually at least mention them in the work session so uh, uh, we can maybe have this a This is the mentioning right now. <laughs> this, this is the mentioning. <laughs> uh, it's all fairly standard. If there are any questions on the bids or uh, Gary, anything jump out at you from the consent agenda that's unusual? No, we, uh, we talked about it a little more today. No, I think it's just routine. Uh, you know, we need a new stage curtain at Riverdale and need a new hot water heater at Cedar Grove and uh, the servers. We need to fix the HVAC system back there. It's just, uh, and then the contracts are pretty routine. Aaron. Um, with regard to the surplus material, is there anything preventing us from looking at donation options rather than disposal of the uh, surplus that did not bid? I think we have to surplus everything and then beyond that, I don't remember the protocol. Jeff? I, I think we could look at Typically, much of the stuff that doesn't get bid on is yeah. true. Yeah. Um, what's the time frame for uh, disposal? Do we have 30 days to send? You know, if we could, you know, take another 30 days and and you know the same way we say, you know, 39 vendors were sent something or other. If we could send a 39. Uh, county charities or something like that and say take a look at this for donation and then execute disposal Angel Jeff Jeff I, I don't, don't think so yeah okay I don't want to hold it up or clutter up the warehouse but you know if, if there's something there it could be useful to somebody Okay. Well, I mean, if there's a reason not to, you know, set me in the right direction, you know, and, and let's get on with getting it out of the way. Gary? I was just talking no, to say okay. that um, when you start hanging on to that stuff, we've experienced this before, that it ends up tying a lot of manpower up. Sometimes you end up moving it two or three times. It's just, uh, it gets into quite a bit of time. Sticking it out in the hallways and just different things and rooms that they would normally try to use. So, uh, and we keep schedule full of stuff right now. We just we just don't have any room for it. But it does tie up a lot of manpower. Uh, if there's some way that you were assured that you could get rid of it quick, it might be feasible. But I don't really think it's that feasible to do it. I'm satisfied with that explanation. Let's uh, but go if forward you, with disposal. If you dispose of some of it, has to be disposed. You know, if, if we declare it just junk. Well, yeah. I was going to say, like computer, uh, some of that stuff is considered toxic. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be disposed of correctly, and we finally have uh, managed to come up with a firm that will come and get that stuff at no cost to us and get rid of it and dispose of it. I think they take it apart, take the gold out of it and different things. And it's been kind of a struggle getting that lined up. We've had two or three different people over the 
years and they'll do it sometimes not, but we have a pretty good outfit right now that's getting it. I kind of hate to mess with them. We used to have to pay to have that done. Right. Uh, one other thing that does come up occasionally, if Mrs. Pater if purchasing is aware of, uh, like as we have moved more to the projectors for the computers in the classroom, some of our old media table carts have been available. Those have been I, I, sold for a minimal price or even given to other school systems. Okay. So things that are still functioning and they can use in their technology programs. We, yeah, we, we're on the, we look out for opportunities like that. I know some time back, and this was about the time I came here, I believe, we had desks that were in good repair. And uh, some of those were given to Cannon County, I believe, at that point. So we try to keep in mind if it is something still in good enough shape to be used by another school system. A lot of it's old computer equipment that really doesn't, yeah, you can't even get people to take it. Don, you had a question? Uh, hot water heater. Is that installed or is it just a heater? Um, it's just a heater. Just in, yeah. Are we using all gas heaters now or do we have some? Uh, everything, I think we're pretty much all on the gas. We may have a few little small ones around uh, where it's more feasible to have one located than to, you know, circulate water or whatever, but most of them are large water heaters. We do our own insulation in this um, A lot of times, most of the time, unless it's just so huge that we can't deal with it and it's difficult to get in and out of the building and that type of stuff. Thank you. That's just general information. Okay. Other questions on the consent agenda? Okay, I guess that takes us to eight. Financial matters, uh, budget amendment. This amendment budgets $36,987 in account 43990. Other charges for services and related clerical and custodial pay and benefits for Homer Pitter Campus School. MTSU is paying most of the cost of a clerical position and another custodial position at Homer Pitter Campus School. Uh, they were MTSU positions last year. Uh, next amendment increases account 46511 basic education program by 1 million 100, uh, pardon me, 1 million $218,290 and decreases account 46512 BEP era by the same amount. State has reallocated its era funds that were used to fund part of the BEP. There's no impact on our total BEP funds. Uh, next, $199,912 is being added to account 47590, other federal through state for materials and supplies for children whose families are eligible for free and reduced meals. Each uh, year the system receives an allocation that helps pay part of the cost for the system's high cost special education students. This amount must be budgeted in the GPS budget. This year's allocation is $60,081 more than is already budgeted. This amendment covers the revenue and accounts 47143, Education of Handicapped, IDEA, and 47145, Special Ed Preschool Grants, and their Special Education Related Expenditure. And we'll recommend that you amend that money. Questions on that? All right, excellent. Increased petty cash <coughs> for Rutherford County Teacher Center and North Rutherford County Teacher Center. It's recommended that the petty cash, cash on hand amounts at the Rutherford County Teacher Center be increased from $50 per secretary to $100 per secretary for a total petty cash, cash on hand of $300. <coughs> Rutherford County Teacher Center and North Rutherford County Teacher Center secretary positions are designated as the petty cash custodian. Petty cash custodians will sign a receipt for petty cash funds received and will agree to abide by the Rutherford County, Tennessee guidelines for petty cash and change accounts. Petty cash must only be used to make change for the customer. <coughs> no disbursements will be allowed from the account. No personal checks will be cashed. And recommend that you approve the petty cash amounts uh, as, as described. Grant. 
we've always had a good plan on this. It's, it's, it's just more solidifying what we already have had. And because petty cash in private industry has always been a problem, and this we've got a good way of accounting for it here. And obviously, it's uh, it's, it's good we uh, put it on uh, on record to show it. Okay. Other questions? <coughs> Nine. You want to take that? Yeah, down? I'll take that. This is in response to a discussion we've had at least two board meetings about uh, having a planning session, something we have only done once in the last six years. Um, we were all scarred psychologically by that process, but it's probably time to try again in a different uh, venue with a different moderator, a different board. And so Upon your instruction, I investigated um, a, an option that is offered through MTSU, or I guess it was an organization that's affiliated with MTSU. Patrick McCarthy and his colleagues uh, do these sort of plans for corporations, for you know, I guess probably nonprofits certainly have done it for a, a couple of other school systems. Um, which I just got the thing, uh, Joyce, is that? Yeah, it's on under your tab, the, the entire packet that I got either, I think, this morning. Um, now I can't get back to the spot, but that's what that's all about. Uh, we just thought it might be good to go, assuming you want to go forward with this, it, we're looking at both from the board standpoint primarily and and his calendar that February looks like a good time to do it. I mean, and I would rather not wait till January to approve it if we're going to do it the very next month. Or at least get, if we're not going to do it, we need to let him know. So I, I don't want you to feel rushed, but that's that was the thinking and going ahead and putting it on the, the agenda. Questions on that? Let me just say, I anticipate there might be a question about the cost. When we did it, I've forgotten now what year it was, we certainly paid TSBA a fee, which was shared with that the person who moderated. <coughs> so this is not something that people do for free. In fact, if you looked at the uh, consent agenda, you notice that Becky Thomason, who we give all sorts of business to, charges two thousand dollars a day. So I mean, that's <coughs> sort of the going rate. It seems like a lot. And I would certainly work a day for two thousand dollars, but this is a specialized skill that. That aside, I have no, you know, I have no <laughs> personal axe to grind here. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. Um, I just think we probably need to decide on Thursday. Or we could, if you want to put it off, we can do that. Then we would need to think about doing the actual event at some later date. And if you're like me, when the weather starts to get pretty in the spring, you'd rather not spend a whole Saturday uh, at the Foundation House now. But that's my thinking. That's what I've come up with. But I, I don't I don't take any criticism personally. I might weep a little bit softly. But other than that, <laughs> so questions or comments well, I, about this? Tim? I just finished my orientation with the TSBA uh, that was done Thursday and Friday. And I know that's one thing that I had recommended in that process that, that something along this nature be done. Uh, so uh, that, that in place, I, I, I'm more convinced than I might have been otherwise that this is a proper thing. Uh, I, I, I've been through, I'll just go ahead and mention this now, I've been through two-day sessions that didn't need to be two days. The, I thought this one was good. Aaron, he had been through his as well, so he may comment otherwise, but I, I know teachers will oftentimes comment here. A lot of times we have three-hour in-services that could have been done 30 minutes. Uh, I, w I would question, frankly, going beyond a day, if it, whether it could be worthwhile or not. Uh, I've never done one longer than that, but uh, well, no, this is just one day. It is one day. That's yeah, what I'm, that's what okay. I'm saying. Right. I, I think I think the time is is an appropriate amount of time to do so. Well, we talked about making it even shorter. He was a little uncomfortable with making it too much shorter, just because if you're going to do it, you want to make sure it's worthwhile. Uh, I stressed to him that we didn't want to get into a lot of touchy feely, squishy type of stuff. I think I was safe in making that statement, wasn't I? That we want a practical result to come out of this. We want to talk about not so much grand theories and do we believe that education is important. I think we're all agreed on that, but we want it, this to be result in something that will give us something of a plan. You know, Aaron raised this, and I appreciate the fact that he did it. 
because we're really at a stage where it probably is appropriate for us to take a day and do the sort of planning and discussion that we don't really do, can't really do in a regular board meeting. So uh, that's what this is all about. Grant. Well, I'm, I'm proud that we're able to find facilities here to do it. I mean, you know, so much, so many times you say you want to get out of town, the truth matter is that's taking part of your day individually and otherwise and the cost involved. So this would be the cost would be in the, in the program. So thank you I for like raising that. that. There'd be no fee for rent. I mean, renting the foundation or leasing the foundation house, using the foundation house. Um, so and we're not going to, I wanted to go to the Bahamas, but apparently there might be some problems with that. Now, I mean, uh, we didn't see a need in going out of town uh, to do it. So further discussion, questions? Okay, number 10. 10, uh, I'm gonna recommend that you approve the reopening of the 2010-2011 REA agreement to negotiate a non-recurring 2% bonus and to provide a non-recurring 2% classified bonus contingent upon approval of the revised 2010-2011 REA agreement. That'll be funded from uh, stimulus money. What's it, what's it called, education? Education jobs. Education jobs and it's money that, uh, as I said, it's you know, federal money that has to be dedicated to jobs. We could hire people with it, however, that would be re a recurring cost. Uh, and in retrospect, or we could offer bonuses uh, to select teachers, uh, in, right, in lieu of doing this, but. You know, teachers in this county haven't had anything in two or three years. Uh, uh, classified got a couple percent a couple of years ago, and it's and I think the board agrees. It's wonderful to be in a position where we might can give them two percent. I'd also add that there's another potentially another one percent uh, for a bonus for next year and a one percent pay increase for next year. Uh, we're hesitant to use that money now in view of the fact that if the BEP couldn't be fully funded, we could tap into that money mm -hmm. and use that uh, to fund the, the, our budget. Uh, you know, we've kind of been told that the BEP will be funded this fall. Uh, however, uh, there's some uncertainties there. So, uh, you know, I hope the county commission who will have to approve this will jump on board and recognize that, you know, teachers have haven't had anything in a good while and uh, nowhere to classify and they'll, they'll certainly uh, endorse and approve this. Discussion. Uh, just one of, I'm sorry, Eric. What criteria will we use to, uh, you know, to hand this out? You know, would it be just across the board, everybody gets a 2% bonus? Yes. Is there opportunity for us to make it based on uh, some accomplishment or, you know, get something? Uh, I mean, I, th that'd be some tough criteria to develop right now. I mean, I guess you can go back and start using value-added scores, uh, those kind of deals, but it would be, that would be uncharted territory, would be rough territory. Uh, and I personally would be reluctant to go there. I see a day when, you know, when there's ample notification we might go there, but uh, I don't think that's too much of an option right now. Understood. You know, Aaron, that's, that's not a bad question. I just know no. at the university where we've had small amounts of bonus money and tried to do it based on merit, the blood that was on the floor after that process was carried out was, uh, it wasn't worth it unless there's a big chunk of money. And 2% is a nice bonus, but I'm not sure we want to construct a uh, completely new evaluation system. But I mean, down the road, that seems to be the way the nation is going. I mean, it's certainly part of the n new Tennessee plan. Right, and that's, and that's what really brings it to my mind right. is uh, one of the things that was highlighted uh, at the state convention for the school boards was that the federal government saw that when they offered the race to the top money, uh, a whole lot of people made changes 
we were fortunate enough to get money for the changes that we made. But a lot of other people made changes, didn't get any money. Uh, and so they saw that and said, wow, this is the wave of the future. Uh, tell everybody, make your changes and then we'll evaluate and we're gonna reward somebody who made the best changes. And the result is that a whole lot of people make changes and they, don't, they only have to reward you know, those who make the best changes. Uh, if there were continuing education opportunities or something like that that we really wanted to get our staff and faculty to, uh, you know, to reach and stretch uh, in some manner, uh, you know, it would be an opportunity. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. But just a quick history lesson. We have people that have gotten a national board certification. We've, uh, what do we give, $4,000? We get a one-time bonus of yeah, $4,000 for achieving that status. Yeah. Excellent. And there, it seems like it, we, there's some other incentives we've done during the course of time. I, I'm not sure off the top of my head what they are. Both know that, Ms. Barnes. So uh, our newly created uh, uh, article in our contract allows people to go back to school to add math and science, but it's not a bonus. Of course, we have career ladders, which is in the past. That's something you get here for achieving that status. Yeah. And you know, uh, Mr. Holliday, there's been some, uh, you know, over time they've talked about uh, folks that teach in high poverty schools, paying them. Mm -hmm a higher mm -hmm. salary and doing some of those things. And again, I think that's something down the pike that I think we really need to consider. Uh, it's a short notice, I don't know that we can do that. I wanna also say, just for clarification, like for example, we may be coming back to the board next month and asking for a bus or two, uh, which will exceed what we budgeted, uh, but we may have held off as long as we can. Well, we can't use this money for that bus. We can't use this money uh, for any kind of construction at Stewart's Creek High or Eagleville Edition or anywhere else. I mean, we're really l limited with respect to how we can use this. So uh, virtually the only thing we can do is, is some kind of bonus, some kind of incentive, uh, something along those lines. You're talking about special ed, ed buses, possibly, is that what you're talking about? One, our, our uh, Atlas population's up. Uh, those buses are paying. And, and, uh, you know, we end up running three shuttles from uh, Smyrna Laverne area to, to uh, Oakland and uh, Central Magnet. And we thought we might get by with one or two. So those kind of things, <laughs> those kind of things add up. Is so, there any so. sunset on this money? I mean, is there a, a, a place where we need to spend it by some date? Yeah. Okay. Donald. Uh, I kind of like the bonus uh, idea. Uh, that is, that's a raise for this year, in a sense, and it's, and I like that word, none reoccurring, because, uh, you know, we still, if we put it in, uh, if we use it in certain ways, then it's going to just roll over year after year. This way, we're getting a good good use out of it for every employee in the, in the system, uh, and I, I understand the bonus and try to get uh, different uh, people uh, that have contributed a great deal. But hopefully, uh, in the ideal world, everyone is contributing their part, and they haven't been uh, getting a raise for quite some time. So I. I like this uh, reoccurring aspect for every employee. Okay, other discussion? No, one additional comment, and Ms. Barnes can speak to this. I think when the day comes that there is some kind of negotiated uh, salary or increase for performance, obviously it's gonna have to be approved by the REA. Uh, that's going to be a tough, tough thing to negotiate. It's going to be a tough team thing in, uh, in in your own mind to reconcile who ought to get it, why you ought to get it. You know, and, and some people may have an excuse, a real good excuse, why their value added, if that's one component, isn't as good as someone else. It, it's just it's going to be difficult to do. Yep. I, I'd be curious as approximately how much money we're talking about on average, because I, I think there'll be some sense that, that people recognize that that's two percent overall. We're talking about two percent of the county portion, yeah, our system portion. So. 
Oh, it is. You, you are talking about. Okay. That's a, that's, a, that's a good hit there. That's a much better hit. I, mean, I would have sensed because I know that the system portion is considerably smaller than the overall portion. Right? Good. I'm glad we can do that. I mean, it's, I assume we're going to do it, but I mean, I. Seems like it's been five, six years ago. We got they got sixty-four dollars or something. You remember that, Jeff? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little better. Good. Eleven's our monthly policy review. So if you get a chance to look those policies over uh, before Thursday, that'd be good. Number twelve. We uh, met last Thursday or Friday. Uh, Mr. Sam Vig. Uh, Tom Nolan, uh, Principal Riverdale, who else? ABC Moore, Josh, C C uh, Principal Whitworth McKinnon, Josh Coodley, safety guy, uh, director for the county, uh, Angel, James. Anyway, and what precipitates that, uh, despite all the good that the cameras have done on buses, and they have done good, that was a heck of a good expenditure, and they always, almost always bear out what mm -hmm. truly happened on the bus and took. Enormous one pressure off the bus driver, and also have been used successfully to prosecute those that have perpetuated inappropriate acts on a bus. Well, we had that said, there'd been something recently, and, and uh, I told Angel and James, I said, We've got to, you know, maybe we're not doing enough. Cameras aren't alone, aren't enough. And there'd been a couple, of, there was an incident at Riverdale High School, uh, rumored that there'd been an incident at one or two other high schools where kids had. Uh, perpetuated some kind of inappropriate action against a, a student. So we put this group together, and, and I have to, uh, and Angel and James are taking the ball and rolling with it. James, you want to come up here for a second? But out of that, I thought we had some really, really good ideas on how we might uh, address some of these things. And one of the things that I think we all agreed at, upon, it's, it's really become more of a uh, cultural issue. Mm -hmm. You know, what took place when we were in school is different what goes on in schools now. You know, what they see on television, how the, you know, the sexting, the, you know, the... the Social media thing. Yeah, the, the affection they are, they're openly show each other in schools, the holding hands, you know, and everything's okay with a lot of these girls up to a point, and then they want to stop, and the guy wants to carry on, and next thing you know, it's they're being cuffed and hauled off the bus or we're being plastered all over the front of the paper. So James, if you would, just kind of discuss what transpired and go from there. Well, the first thing the board will see is that next week's policy meeting, uh, Angel will be bringing forward a proposal for Mr. Gill to make uh, sexual battery charges uh, against a student a zero tolerance offense. Uh, right now we have four uh, areas that are classified as weapons, assault against school per personnel, drugs, and then vandalism over $500. Uh, so this would be the fifth item if the policy committee approves it. And the, the thinking behind that is that if you make the punishment you know, uh, extreme, that maybe that will be a deterrent on its own. Uh, we're also looking at bus monitors. Mr. Joe asked us to look at them. Mm -hmm. He's got Mike and Jeff looking at some of the expenses and, and kind of surveying what other districts are doing. Uh, it's obviously an expensive option, but it's one that um, would do a lot of good if we could afford it. So they're looking at different ways that other districts have done that. Then the other part, and this touches on what Mr. Gill said with the society issues, is that uh, to have an education program in school for kids, we're, we're looking at putting together some sort of presentation maybe through a video uh, that has maybe Judge Scott, some other uh, locals that can you know, explain to kids the legal ramifications of, of these sorts of actions <coughs> and also just the, the personal responsibility they have between one another. Um, this would also include some sort of information about cyberbullying and sexting. Um, and then maybe even a policy we've discussed about making public displays of affection at school, uh, you know, something that's in the discipline code, uh, similar to like a dress code. Uh, because like Mr. Gill said, it starts out with something that's partially consensual, or, uh, consensual and then it, it goes further and, and the girls want to stop and you know, the, the boys have got their hormones going and it doesn't and, and it ends up being some sort of criminal charge. Um, and then we definitely want to include principals in this, get their input, parents. You know, we've got the Parent Advisory Council that's a resource to us. We can poll them and get some ideas from them. We've got the survey that, that we have the option to do to 
get some parent input on that because if we don't have buy-in from parents at home to reinforce this at home, you know, it's, it's never going to work. So, because we do have some cases where mommy and daddy doesn't care if, if Susie's kissing her boyfriend at school. She, she lets him do that, lets them do that at home. We've got to let them know that we can't have that at school. You wouldn't expect that at your place of work. Uh, you know, someone on the committee said you wouldn't see two people at work holding hands walking down the hallway. You know, it's just not acceptable at work, and we need to, to be pushing that same type of message at school as well. So, uh, any questions or input from the board? Give me, uh, James, before they answer, they answer the question. Uh, we talked about timelines, what we hope to, when, we, when you guys are meeting again, what we're going to ultimately do. Well, we have two meetings already coming up. We have one coming up with Barry uh, Hendricks from the Sheriff's Department to talk about some of the wording on the um, the legal wording for the policy that you'll see next week. Uh, Mike also has set up a meeting with some bus drivers that we're going to attend at the uh, Thursday, I believe, uh, to get their input on, on ways that we can help control conduct on the bus specifically. Uh, we're going to be going to principal's meetings after Christmas, uh, getting their input. Uh, Mr. Gill may also even call a special principal's meeting up here to talk about this very issue. Uh, it's going to take a little while, but we're, we're, we're do doing it in chunks. So the policy will be the first thing you see. Go from there. I'm glad you're doing it. Taking a little proactive stance on this. So that's a good thing. Questions or comments from the board? Grant. I think I saw, and it may have been a couple of years ago, a, a film was out addressing some of these issues. And I don't know who you would maybe contact to see about something that's already been there. Ms. Barnes has located there. a number of, of uh, short films that you can get from the websites. We have to get permission to use them. And we may use some of those, but we also think that having uh, something that's locally produced, maybe get Channel 19 to help us out with their capabilities, uh, have some local law enforcement people and things like that would also carry a lot of weight. We maybe include some, some kids, some students on the video to, to talk about, you know, uh, you know, another issue we've had is that it, it shocks us sometimes that we can't believe that the girls don't, don't say stop, get off of me. You know, they don't, they don't draw attention to it immediately. You know, if we could have some girls that say it's okay to do that so that we can get things before it gets too far. Mm -hmm. that, that would be a big help. Other comments? Tom. Um, how is the maintenance of our cameras with our contractors? Uh, is that turning out okay? We've had some issues with regard to these hard drives that have caused us problems. Uh, Western Digital hard drive Okay, thank you, James. General discussion. Tim. I just want to add to what I commented on about the orientation I went through. I, I, I came away with it with a, a, a real sense, first of all, that uh, uh, there's a lot of good things going on here. I, I think from the general comments and questions and, and things that I observed from people around the state that's there, uh, I, I came away feeling really good about what our system is doing overall uh, where we where we stand I think we are proactive in many many areas uh, I was frankly shocked at some of the the questions and and, and, and comments that, that were made about things that are being done that I, I think are clearly not uh, proper in, 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 in ways things that should be done so I, I would hope that that people can feel good about what's what's taking place within our system because I do think that uh, I came away with a real sense that that, that things are and we do need to improve. I certainly don't want to indicate that we don't have room for improvement, but I, I can't wait with the true sense that we're ahead of the curve, at least in comparison to what the other systems that I saw there. Grant. I agree 100%. You know, we've uh, had several meetings uh, lately on, on different uh, different areas, but it, it's cream comes to rise to the top here. I, I mean, we uh, we get a lot of compliments and, and, and they're well deserved on, on uh, board members and, and and just employees in general uh, in our system. And, and uh, a lot of the comments are that uh, we don't see how you function as well as you do given the budget and uh, given the whole situation. So uh, it's a compliment uh, to uh, 
people that have been in the system a long time before we get that uh, our system is doing well. Uh, a, a, a second point of that, I don't know what what the policy, uh, and maybe that's not the practice would be the better question, but what we do to celebrate successes through the board itself. Uh, that's something that they mentioned. I'm not, I'm not particularly good about doing that with my own children and <laughs> Linda. <laughs> and and my, my, my family and, and whatever, I, I, I sometimes tend to think that they recognize that I think that they're doing a good job, but I don't, I don't share that enough. And I really tried to work at that better as I was in the job place. But as a board, what kinds of things are we doing to be sure that we're sending letters or doing things that we celebrate the successes and, and make sure that folks that are doing good jobs, that we, we're trying to find some way to get that done? And, and I don't know what that practice is. Is there a way that we could make that better? Well, we probably could make it better. We, I mean, we do several things. The spotlight on education is, is one thing that we do almost every meeting in which we bring a group who's doing something good. That uh, James has got a variety of, of uh, well, we've had, yeah, publications we've had and websites. And notes and yeah. updates. And it's, it's quite common that Mr. Oldham and myself are sending out correspondence to principals and let them know how proud we are of their achievements. We recognize and uh, I still think uh, one of the best things we've ever done was create our principal cohort groups where we kind of kind of feed off each other and celebrate and talk about the good things that are taking place. I mean, I think when you're getting it from your peers who or folks have been down in the trenches, they really mm -hmm. appreciate that kind of praise. Uh, but you know, like like Mr. Tackett said, we probably could do better. I'm I'm not suggesting yeah. that, that we're not doing a good job yeah. at all. I'm just I'm just asking more from an informational standpoint. Mm -hmm. And and it, it never hurts to be reminded that that uh, those things are really important to do. Uh, the, the news media has their job to do, and so I'm, I'm not being critical of that. But we all know that the 95 percent of what's going to make news. Are going to be things that are going to look negative, be looked upon negatively, as far as students are concerned, as teachers are concerned, the system is concerned in, in general. And uh, I just think it's really important that we do all we can to let people know that uh, for the for the vast majority of people, uh, that a good job is being done here. And I think, and I think the general public here recognizes that. Uh, and, but I, 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 we just can't shed enough light on that. I think your 95 percent estimate might be a little low. <laughs> be closer to 99 percent. And you know, I th Donald was the principal. I was Don. Uh, we always try to promote, and you were Tim. We always try to promote good things in the paper, and it's it's uh, and it's no. I don't think it's a reflection on the paper. It's not what really sells. No, sure. You know, sell. And then they want, they're more interested in, you know, what happened on a bus or kind of problems the principal Laverne High's having or those kind of deals and uh, you don't ever hear the good news. I go out on a lot of times on weekends running people say man y'all are doing great we're so proud of y'all we're so proud of the school system and I'm thinking I don't I don't hear that very mm -hmm. often you know all I hear is somebody down there telling them talking about you know how a teacher at Eagle Ball would be fired or how the principal at Laverne's doing this or uh, it's just the nature of what what we have to deal with. Aaron. Going back to the uh, policies that we're looking at this month, we have both uh, safety and emergency preparedness uh, in this collection. And last meeting, we heard about some, some issues about tornado warnings and such. And we really have an, you know, an increased knowledge. You know, technology and, and weather reporting and everything has given us the ability to be able to differentiate between one end of the county and the other end of the county. And it may be too specific to make it a part of this policy, but I wanted to kind of bring that up as we've got this here. Uh, is there anything, Mr. Gill, that, that you can say to us about, you know, that issue? Yeah, yeah. First of all, I'd like to just quickly, you know, we have, one of the things I'm real proud of is that we have stepped up security measures over the last eight years. You know, we've done flip charts for teachers so they know how to respond appropriately. We've had all kinds of drills within the school in conjunction with the sheriff's department. Uh, 
make sure schools are safer. We put in vestibules in almost every school so that some people can't just walk into the school. We've got measures in place in school so that a parent, even when they're allowed in school, can't just meander down the hallway or they can't walk in a teacher. There's all kinds of measures in place. And I know Dr. Burns and I were talking about the uh, uh, Stewart's Creek's, uh, the Raptor, Raptor system. system. We'll yeah. talk about that in just a second. But it is hard when you've got, like, for example, a tornado watch versus a warning. And what's happening in Smyrna Laverne may not be happening in Christiana or may not be happening out at Walter Hill. Right. And we kind of, and we obviously followed up on this, these folks' uh, concerns about warning versus watch and uh, intention is to send out a, a subsequent correspondence on tornado drills. Paula, I know you and Josh have met on it. regardless of the location. It's a good day to do it. It's a drill for the school, regardless of where you are in Rutherford County. It gives you a chance to practice that drill. And it's a safe measure, regardless of where you are in the system. So that's the protocol that we've asked everybody to follow from this point forward. And we, excuse me, Mr. Gill, we shared that same information with the parents that were concerned about that. Right. But yeah, I, if I can, just, we don't have much on the agenda. That day, I tried, and you know, we've got next deals and the talk one where I can talk to all the principals, but it doesn't reach everybody. And Angel put a correspondence together. We got the word out that, for example, uh, you know, there was a uh, warning that apparently was going to be in, in effect for most of the county. That's the case. If a parent wants to come get their kid prior to say if your school dismisses at 2:30, let them have them. Mm -hmm. We're not fighting parents and saying, hey, there's a warning in place. You take them. But once 2:30 hits, we're locking this place down. Uh, we're putting them in safe areas if the, if the warning's in the immediate area. We, uh, you know, we gave it a considerable amount of, of uh, discussion and thought we had everything in place that ought to be in place. But again, it's, you know, uh, what, no good plan goes unpunished sometimes. Uh, but there were a couple, uh, you know, I'm not sure that we hit it on the mark 100%, but, you know, we try to learn from that and be grateful that nothing happened to anybody and, and improve on it next time. Harry, you and I were talking about the the good job this Raptor system did in a case down at Stewart's Creek. And can you talk a little bit about that and, and what plans we might develop? To, sure. Well, if it's worth expanding to the other schools and how we might do that. Uh, I will. It, it, if, before I do that, so I don't forget, I'm at, you know, I'm at the magic 60 now. Uh, everybody sees Ryan Nance out here. Uh, Ryan's working on his EDS at Ball State. That's right, isn't it, Ryan? And uh, if he doesn't get an A, no one ought to ever get an A. He's been, <laughs> he's ridden across the county in a school bus with us to visit the, the Laverne and Smyrna and Blackman and been down here. And he's actually helped us out with some uh, studies and information. So uh, I just didn't want him to think this is all you had to do, Ryan. <laughs> anyway, appreciate you and good luck. And also in that, when I'm finished with this Raptor uh, discussion, Mr. Odom's going to talk a little bit about our exceptional uh, Explorer scores. But Stewartsboro, two or three years ago, uh, Stewart's Creek, Stewart's Creek, pardon me, uh, requested permission to, to uh, implement a Raptor system, which basically means that a person comes in, you scan their uh, driver's license, and if they don't have a driver's license, is that the only thing, Paul, that they'll scan a blue? No, that's the only thing that it works out. Yeah. And it almost instantly, if they're on the sex offender registry, it does instantly tell them. And in this particular case, uh, this person who really had no connection to the school other than his girlfriend's child went there, was caught, arrested, taken off the premises. And I think, uh, Jeff, do you know the cost of, of the Raptor system? Two couple thousand, is there an annual maintenance fee or anything? I don't you know, I think given what happened, it may be something that's worth us looking into mm -hmm. and, wow. yeah. and perhaps pursuing down the pike. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Well, 
as the budget process approaches, that might be something, I mean, I know it's going to be another lean year, but that might be something we try to insert. Any other questions or comments before Mr. Odom comes forward? I think one of the things that you can really be proud of, well, that green kind of blacked it out, didn't it, as far as on the screen. But if you look at your Explore scores, the ones that were in green were at or above national average. And so the lamp underneath might do it. That's a little. <clears throat> but anyway, I, th I think you can be proud of your middle schools. That's a national test. It's an ACT test. So um, we use this information basically to uh, counsel with students. And, and parents, the parents get back information about um, some of the, their likes, uh, what, what students are interested in, their aptitudes, to help them make selections when they get to high school. We also use a little bit of this sometimes to help in placement in uh, types of classes in high school as a student maybe needs some remediation or something. But each of those, uh, you can see up there, like uh, the English and the comparison, uh, the math, this is your national average, basically, for 2010. They haven't renormed in a while. But reading and all, as you, you look at that, it's three tenths higher than the year before, the highest score. But anyway, this is your national score. This was Rutherford County's score. So I think that, uh, that makes a difference. So I'm very proud of that. Um, the other score uh, that we've gotten back Which that score was eighth grade students. Uh, this score was for sophomores. Basically, in high school, we, in three of the areas, we were above the national average. So it gives you kind of a chance to see that. Also, um, Tennessee, Tennessee pays for the Explore test, the plan test, and one ACT administration for every student. So that, that gives you some, some information or feedback for us. The plan test, this particular one, they get the sophomore year, and it, it's in the fall of the sophomore year. And, and I just tell you, the students really haven't had enough math and enough science to really do that well, even though we're ranking okay, comparing nationally. I mean, they're just not really ready at that time to, uh, to get the results you'd like to see. If Tennessee were thinking about a way to save some money, <laughs> my recommendation would be this would be a test we wouldn't have to have. I do like Explore we, and paying for the ACT I think is great, but I'm not sure this one gives us the kind of information we need. It's just too early in their career in high school. Any questions from anybody on that? The state report card, they told us Friday, will probably be a Christmas present, uh, <laughs> you know. So, um, I mean, they're still, they had to produce another AYP detail, the first one had some errors in it, and that's not uncommon. Sometimes we get two and three a year when they're going through this process. So they produced a new one. They extended their appeal period through this Friday. Typically, the state gives two years, two weeks after the appeal to look it over before they publish it. So that, you know, the 10th is Friday and 14 days is 24th. I don't, I don't think they'll do it that day, but when they said it'll probably be a Christmas present, I think that's probably true. Questions for Don? When does, you mentioned the Explore, the Plan, and then the ACT. When does that test take place? The ACT is an interesting, um, we have gotten a couple of CDs on that. The problem is the way they handle that, and they charge you for every one they give you. If you ask for the data, there's another charge there. That they make some money delivering their data. But they have one that, there's one CD that covers they give in the school. But then they have another CD that most of your children will take the ACT more than once. They'll take it once, and then they'll take it again, and sometimes a third time. Then there's another CD that they produce that, 
that has all of these administrations, you know, summarized together. And, and I have a CD, but I, I was afraid really to produce you one until I know which one they're going to use for the state report card, because I don't know. I, I don't know which one is the, is the reflection. I'd hate to put something out to the public and it not be the same one that turns out on the state report card. But where in a student's tenure do they take they that? They typically junior year. Okay. Most The state gives it the junior year, and it's in the spring. Okay. So this spring we'll have an administration for all of our juniors, and it's not uncommon at all, again, for parents after the students take the test, the senior year take it another time or another couple of times, and typically students do a little better after being accustomed to that type of test. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Anything else? We're adjourned.